born. This movie makes me wish I was never born. Here's what I'd say if I wanted to be completely ridiculous about this silly little movie. is one of Alison Brie's earliest starring roles, and it's kind of nuts. Not only do we get to see Alison Brie in the really wonky role of Mary Elizabeth, the virgin who gives birth to a demon, but we also have Kane Hodder. Of course, best known for being one of the Jason Voorheeses in one of his first acting roles where he's actually given a sizable amount of dialogue. I'm Asmodeus, torturer of the 13th level of hell. Which I guess is something he was actually quite excited about. It's kind of too bad for him it couldn't have been in a more well-crafted movie, but hey, at least it's in an amusing movie. Though, I will warn you that while this movie is pretty worth it for a lot of the silly stuff going on, it does kind of make you work a lot for some of these moments. Particularly once you get to the hour 20 mark, and it feels like the movie should be wrapping up at that point, only for it to go on for another 27 minutes. We kick this thing off with a demon going to see a shrink, because he's upset his plan to become human again isn't going as smoothly as he wanted, so he's sort of stressed about it. Just point and pull the trigger anytime you want. I'm a demon. All right. Why don't you have a seat? Just like that. Demon walks in your office and says, have a seat. Why aren't you more impressed with me? I'm totally demoning it up here. Look, I got some smudgy scar makeup around my eyes that you can almost see. You do get a better view of it later when he's not Mr. Cool demoning it up and, uh... Yeah, maybe you should stick to the shades. Or just forget the makeup entirely, which they do! A few times! Really, though, I think the most impressive thing in this scene is the highly distracting light-up pen the psychiatrist has. I really don't know why, though, they thought that leaving that flashing through the scene was a good idea. I tell ya, they really screwed up on that one. Asmodeus is probably also upset because his mother just died and he's been crying so much that he scarred himself wiping away all the tears. Hey, they don't tell us why he has that makeup, so he might as well come up with something. Asmodeus used to be the brother to Alison Brie and Denise Crosby's characters in this movie. Yeah, these three are all siblings in this. Apparently, their parents waited 25 years in between having Denise Crosby and Alison Brie. I know this is a very difficult time, but we do have to be out of here by 5 o'clock. Are you kicking us out of my mother's funeral? It's okay. It's not a very good funeral anyway. I mean, look at this turnout. Your mother is not here anymore. She's with your brother Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, you're dead. What a story. Ha <laughs> ha. Kinda surprised he wasn't born as Modius, but yes, in the very real tombstone shot, we learn that he used to be Mark. No last name, no dates. It's just a community grave for anyone named Mark, I suppose. This movie is also blocked really poorly for the 4-3 full screen frame it's in, as you'll often see people kinda cut off. It seems it was meant for 16-9 widescreen, but to date I've never seen it have a release in that. The only widescreen footage I've seen for this film is from the official trailer on YouTube, which looks amazingly terrible. It's letterbox, super interlaced, and it's in 240p. It's kind of hard to believe that it's real. Like a lot of this, I suppose. Hello? Well, if this mystery baby sound isn't scary enough, what about random twins? What was the point of that? She might be in a double mint gum commercial, oh no! I apologize, Born, but twins stopping behind a tree so Alice and Bree can't see them doesn't really set much of a mood. Neither does the really poor shooting of this non-reveal of them supposedly disappearing. Anywho, after the baby noise won't shut the hell up, Alice and Bree starts digging because obviously it must be one of those ground babies that you can hear perfectly clear. But sometimes dead. Is better, or something. Digging this crap up literally blows Alison Brie away. She tries to endure the silly effects until the ground gets hungry and decides to eat her. <laughs> oh yeah, just toss a little holy water on it and walk away. That's his job done, I guess. It's okay. <laughs> Oh 
Oh, yeah. You see, Dr. Evil here might look evil, but he's actually a good guy. You shouldn't judge people by their appearances. Anyway, he turns out actually to be evil later, so you should judge people by their appearances, apparently. I'm the caretaker here. Oh, you're, you're Teresa's family. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. Wow. You guys gotta try this. Do you need some extra work? Because I, I could use two strong hands for help around the house. Hey, weird caretaker of the graveyard. Wanna be a handyman? I just figured I might as well get some work done while my day is being wasted by my stupid dead wife. You seem genuinely sorry for raping your sister. <sighs> yes, that silly scene in the cemetery was Asmodeus impregnating his sister. But hey, at least the shrink says it's okay as long as he feels bad about it now. I guess Jason saw all that family sex that Michael Myers got to have in Halloween 6 and got jelly. Now, John, I need to read you a legal disclaimer. Welcome to 900 My Bitch. At no time may you make drug references or threats of violence toward me or any other individual. Oh, yeah, the family lives with a sex hotline worker because I guess they wanted to throw that in. You know, if Catherine finds out about those phone calls, she's going to kick you out so fast. Probably. Isn't the sex line thing? her job? What does Catherine think she does for a living? I don't want to live without my mother. You're going to be fine, but it's going to take some time. I mean, look at me. I'm already over it. I was apparently close to you and your mother, and I didn't even bother going to the funeral. <laughs> I don't believe this. This is a Christian household, and I will not tolerate deviant behavior. And I tell you, there's nothing more sacrilegious than tickling. Well, my mother's gone now, and no more late-night guests. Especially not my stupid sister! Breakfast is on the table for the next five minutes. So I guess you'd better toss it into you real quick. I don't want any poached eggs, wheat toast, cereal, or grapefruit. I don't believe this. How do you know I made that? Why, demonic pregnancy super smelling, of course. It's probably sad that's not a joke. Marison Bree immediately starts feeling the evil pregnancy's effects, so her obvious body double shows off her boobs. 15 pounds? Ah! It's so ugly and green in here, it makes me sick. Now, I don't believe this. I gained 15 pounds overnight. Well, you better have a good explanation why you have the symptoms of a pregnant woman. You know, the usual pregnancy where you gain 15 pounds overnight. Oh, Catherine, I am not a little girl anymore. So Denise Crosby goes full crazy now and starts belting Brie up. It seems a little weird that Catherine turned into a psycho holier than thou prude when no one else in her family is even remotely like this, but whatever. Maybe their dead mom was actually crazy like Catherine, despite everyone saying how nice she was. I mean, people do tend to put the dead up on a pedestal. Anyway, Mary gets away from the light whipping by just dashing off, so Catherine decides obviously the next interrogation step should be some drowning of her sister. Hey, hey! Keep it quiet down there! Maybe this is why Catherine bullies her sister. Her parents were just too lazy to ever stop her. Eventually, the noise annoys Father of the Year and Dr. Evil enough for them to come down and ask Catherine to please stop drowning her sister. We then cut from Father Useless to another Father Useless. Just, you know, the other type of father. You think she's the host? She might be the one. I got slightly suspicious when I saw the ground eat her, though I wasn't interested enough to stick around. Man, Father Skinny Jeans here is kind of the live-action version of Eduardo from Extreme Ghostbusters, isn't isn't he? That's something you don't see every day. A priest packing heat. You are not a man of God. Hey, I'm a scientist. That's insane. But I'm not going to bury my head in the sand. Actually, that's exactly what he's going to do because he never helps out in the plot again. The demon's unborn child is going to force Mary Elizabeth to kill six people. Only I can't do anything till the child is born. So yeah, Father Eduardo Skinny Jeans really is just gonna hang around doing nothing for a large part of the movie. Supposedly, they can't damage the demon baby until it's born, which doesn't make a lot of sense, especially as it needs Mary to kill six people to power it up so it could be born properly. So it should probably be more vulnerable until that happens. We do eventually find out, though, that the Cardinal Father Skinny Jeans is taking 
taking orders from is Master of Disguise Kane Hodder, so it's likely he was just lying about it. You can't stop until the moment the creature is born. There's a reason these killings must be allowed, Father. Though the fact Father Skinny Jeans never pieces together that his orders don't actually make any sense and just sits around the majority of the movie watching people die makes him a rather stupid and boring character. You are the first pregnant virgin I've ever heard of. But that's not possible. Yes, she's the pregnant virgin Mary. Real subtle. But it's just such a clever twist because it's a demon baby. <laughs> Upon finding out that the father of Mary's baby is Metachlorians, Denise Catherine's bee gets super on board with the baby. Because that fits into her insane version of Christianity, where it's not okay to be pregnant unless it's divine intervention, but it is okay to drown someone. What about her nose? She followed it all the way to my Fruit Loops. Or should I say, Foot Loops. Really, how long she just stands there holding her leg up gets kind of awkward. No, no, I don't feel well. Can you please leave? Because none of this makes sense to me anymore and I can't take any of it, especially you! Alison Brie must have shot her voice doing some of these screaming takes. Mary punches a hole in the wall, which is supposed to show her evil baby strength, but when it's paper thin, it's not really that impressive. Neither is this sloppy effect of pasting a cutout part of the wall over her arm a frame too late. I'm guessing the hole made was just too square looking, so they tried to fix it. Speaking of looking like crap, while Mary's off on a contemplating suicide night drive, we get a completely screwed up frame, stretching the bottom pixels from about a quarter way down the picture. Also, Mary is apparently gonna kill herself just by driving really fast into traffic, meaning she'll likely take out others along with herself. Great character. That's really one of the major issues of this film, especially once Mary gets full-blown possessed by her demon baby, there's just really no one to care about. The best you have is Father Skinny Jeans, and he's letting a bunch of people die because he's a moron. Driving back home to my baby. Cause that's where my baby will be. Aw, he's gonna live forever. Mama. Mama. <laughs> A sequence so silly, you really wonder how anyone ever thought someone could take it seriously. I just love that blank stare Alison Brie has too before she does the silly repeat of meh meh. It's like, this is the moment she truly realized what movie she was in. And I gotta tell you, this silly sequence is about half the reason I even wanted to cover this movie. The other half being Alison Brie's hilarious performance. This demon baby saying mama though reminded me of a part of a soap opera I randomly caught flipping channels back in 2002. The soap opera in question, of course, turned out to be Passions. What is it? A boy? A girl? It's a demon! <laughs> mama. Mama. And that's why that's stuck in my head all these years. So, thank you, Bourne, for being about as silly as a dream sequence in Passions. Mary is now in full demon baby CGing his head through her stomach mode, so she runs Mr. Live Forever Truck Driver off the road. Hello, stranger! Hello, feller. She fries him up, but I guess that's still not dead enough, so she pulls a machete from the truck and decapitates him. Why did the truck driver have that? Yeah, geez, that's gonna mess up everything in her purse. Mary's gonna have to buy some new juicy fruit, which is the real tragedy, I think. Ah, uh, then she Kano fatalities his heart out, too. This goes on for about half an hour of her just ripping pieces off this guy. It might as well have. It'd be funnier than some of the filler this movie actually gives us, like Father Skinny Jeans acting surprised that him doing nothing to stop the deaths has resulted in deaths! At least, though, he'll have something for his scrapbook. The movie isn't very good at letting you know this either, but Mary apparently keeps getting her memory wiped by the demon baby. So she constantly finds out her baby is evil, kills someone, and then doesn't remember it the next day. It never gets old. And I can help you have a safe home delivery. I mean, you know my soft touch. She's lactating acid. 
Not since man's best friend with the dog's acid piss have I been so amazed. Anyway, Mary didn't find that weird enough to bring up to anyone, I guess. Or the baby wiped her mind again. You might think Mary might start to wonder why every day was starting to feel like it was only an hour long. But if she did, the baby would just wipe her mind of it, right? Mary Elizabeth, this is Lars. Okay, I'll take a baby mind wipe now. Nah, you gotta keep this memory. Oh, you suck. Any luck with the light bulb? I fixed it. Electronics is my hobby. Yeah, he must be right into electronics to know how to change a light bulb. Anyway, it's pretty normal to have a priest come over to change your light bulbs. I promise I didn't put any extra spy devices in there. Okay, ready. They had to superimpose static? Wow, it's so choppy and fake looking. I just didn't want to fail you like, like I did your mother and your brother. Dad, I never failed anyone. Yeah, your family turned out so Perfect, didn't it, Mary? The dog is apparently in league with the baby, too, as it brings Mary a crow for a midnight snack. And luckily for Mary, the blood from that just immediately disappears when she walks into the hallway to have a chat with Jennifer. I need sex. Who are you and what the hell have you done with my friend? What the hell? I just... Wait, so because he's working as a handyman around the house means Dr. Evil is staying there? Mary then brushes her teeth for a few seconds without any toothpaste, so her mouth has got to be full of cavities. It was really important for me to address that. About as important as it was to be shown it in the first place. Come on, keep it in your pants. Get out of there. If only I had the power to do something. By the way, they also said this baby apparently has to be born on the Day of the Dead, so you think if they stopped it from getting all its sacrifices by then, it wouldn't be born. But why have anyone proactively doing anything? Anyway, Mary screws this guy to death and rips his dick off. Yes, Mama. Baby very hungry. Feed baby and baby be born. I need help reacting to something. <laughs> You kind of get secondhand embarrassment from this, don't you? Baby be born! Baby be born! This reminds me of like when Alice and Bree's characters from Community or Glow or something would be doing bad acting within the show. It's kind of bizarre to see this just supposed to be taken straight. I'll be the same, baby. Kane Hodder then tries slitting his wrist to see if he's become any more human yet. You know, that might not be the best test for that. Asmodeus is probably lucky he's not more human yet. Daddy needs me to be born, mother. I'm glad the baby is explaining it to her so that it can wipe her mind again. Now eat the sacred heart! This is the darkest, most terrible timeline. Drink his blood. I can't. <laughs> Flesh is flesh! It's wrong! Didn't your savior tell his apostles to eat his flesh? Drink his blood? You know, I never wondered what it would be like if Alice and Bree played Gollum. Is there a bunch of cutscenes of the baby forcing Mary to clean up the mess, or is her family just horribly unobservant? Speaking of, they made Catherine into this overbearing, controlling character, so it's really weird that she just vanishes for large parts of the movie, missing Mary having booty calls and her heart dinners. As we enter year three of Mary's pregnancy, you kind of wonder why it was so fast growing at the beginning, yet now it's just taking forever. But hey, at least we get to see cool things like Dr. Evil moving a stone statue to a slightly different spot in the yard. Good thing they have him living there. I don't believe this. Get inside the house before someone sees you. I just remembered that I existed, so I'm angry! So you better stay away from me until I'm packed and I'm out of here. I still can't believe you're not living with us anymore. Can't believe we did that in a comedy like Smash Cut. Oh no! The Pointless Twins! Spooky? Unfortunately for them, the back alley club has a strange no pregnant people policy, so Mary and Jennifer decide they might as well just make out a bit, cause random. I don't know, they are probably just so turned on by the dirty fog alley. Anyway, to make a long story short, the baby kills her. <laughs> 
Don't laugh. Take it seriously. But what happens to your kid? He raises Cain on Earth and replaces me as Hell's torturer when he dies. Every time she whacks someone, I'm supposed to change. So, Shrink, can you tell me why this deal with the devil isn't working correctly? Make way for a scientist. Father Skinny Jeans then kills a bum because he has a nom flashback. He would have been like 15 during the last year of U.S. involvement in that war, so I guess he just looked a lot older than he was. And why did that happen? I would love to know myself. Anyway, let's have lots of prolonged shots showing off how fake the pregnant belly they stuck on Allison Brie is. I mean, it's not even remotely the same skin tone. Hello, miracle baby. That's what you are. A miracle. A miracle that anyone is buying this. <laughs> oh good, it got better. You are experiencing human emotion. Guilt! And they didn't make me at all back here, so this doesn't sound great. Maybe you never really were a demon to begin with. Maybe the real demons were the friends we made along the way. Because I got one shot. So I'd better not miss my chance to blow. <gasps> you can't kill demons with bullets. Ah! Oh yeah, the framing device of the therapy session just ends halfway through the movie, cause who cares. It might have been something if Asmodeus actually was turned human near the end, only to be promptly shot by the therapist, but they have a dumber twist in mind. Thank God the dreams have stopped too. Wakey wakey mommy, baby hungry. Kinda sad when this movie feels more repetitious than one where a time loop is actually happening. I'm gonna let you stay awake for this one, mommy. No! I don't believe this. Wow, old glass jaw Catherine can dish it out, but she sure can't take it. How you feeling, sweetheart? This is gonna be one nasty feeding, mommy. So this scene goes on for a short eternity, with Mary trying to stop the baby from making her kill her dad, and the dad hesitating when it comes to smashing her pregnant stomach. He finally decides to operate to get the baby out of her, and then that goes forever, and Catherine is still knocked out. Guess she has brain damage by now, or maybe she always did. Father Skinny Jeans has finally started to think about actually doing something, but then instead he just waits by the door and watches forever. I hate this guy. Make her bleed like a stuck pig! Don't listen, Daddy, just do it! <laughs> I don't know what I expected. The Catherine's B awakens and heel turns. Yep, she was evil the whole time. Because she was so good before this. Sorry, Albert. Well, at least he apologized. <laughs> it slammed her belly shut like a door. I just needed to say that out loud. <laughs> Father Skinny Jeans got knocked out by the useless twins, who are naked now for no real reason other than boobs. It's also nice and awkward as they stand there strategically holding their hands in front of their crotches for a long time. You're awake! You've been in a coma for a month. He's been hanging in the attic for a month in a coma! Sure, that checks out. Guess I shouldn't have been giving Catherine guff about being knocked out for a long time. Father Skinny Jeans has got to be the knocked out champion. And he's going to have some super soiled skinny jeans. Darn. Who knew, though, if you just hung someone in a coma by their arms, they'd come out of it feeling fine. Guess doctors have been dealing with those all wrong. Hey, look, no bad eye makeup. I did it. I'm human. Just kidding. It didn't work, but still no makeup, because whatever. Used to be their brother. So when did Catherine get pulled into her bro Asmodeus's plan? It must have been sometime after she tried to drown Mary for being pregnant. I kind of feel, too, like aiding a demon is probably against the Bible slightly. But it's okay because she found a passage about that in the Book of Crazy. So this is the point where it really feels like the movie should be coming to an end, but nope, they drag this out by talking about stuff that we've already heard or mwahaha demon crap. Nah, don't worry. We still need you alive for a while. We could kill you now and save ourselves and the audience some time, but we're demons and we love spreading misery. Whoa, 
Boren just got real meta deep on me. Now go get ready and take your sister out, hun. Why can't you do it? Dr. Evil tries to big dog Crosby and she ain't having it, so he gets sad. I don't take orders from a tiny, pasty-faced gargoyle like you. Almost lost the line. Should we do another take? No, it's boring. Just roll with it. Dr. Evil not so subtly reminds Mary how horrible her sister has been to her so that she'll go after her next. Which seems to go against what the movie's been saying the whole time, which is that the baby is the killer and Mary loses all control when she does this stuff. I keep looking on here for something noting that this is actually a comedy, but I can't find it. And somehow scraping Catherine's back kills her? And does Mark Asmodeus not care about his sister, even though he had teamed up with her? Guess they aren't gonna address that, so who cares? I'm not leaving this house, but you still have a chance. Don't say that. I don't want to think I have a chance. I just want this movie over. That's a wild old fact that 99% of albinos born with the same gene we now know causes homosexuality. That's not funny, father. It's funny someone actually wrote this shit. So yeah, Father Skinny Jeans goats Dr. Evil into killing him, screwing up him as the final sacrifice by calling him gay. Such clever stuff here. This doesn't go over that well, and Dr. Evil becomes the final sacrifice instead, so all that build up with Father Skinny Jeans was completely pointless. Anyway, here's some people sticking their heads up through the fake floor. You can hardly tell. Also, I'm glad that even though some of these people have now died months ago, none of their heads have decomposed anymore. Get out of the house! Ah, it's nice they're trying to give Mary a heads up. I love you, Mary Elizabeth. Oh, so with the help of Mummy Ghost, she'll stop the evil birth? Nah, it still happens anyway. This is all just a bunch of stuff that happens. Oh, and then we get fake cameras shaking for some shots where they forgot to actually shake the camera. Looks great. And in this shot with Kane Hodder, they moved it up a little too high. Oops. <laughs> Mary finally goes Super Saiyan. The stupid baby comes out after years of being pregnant. I have many names. Eventually I became known as Satan. Oh yeah, that's a really something. You want to wrap this up, Fallen Shrink? As Modius learns, he did it all for nothing. Shrinkifer just wanted another demon baby, I guess. But I still did everything you wanted. You're going back now. You promised. You can't break our agreement now. We have an agreement. He's so sad. <laughs> That's so funny. He's like a child told that he's not allowed to stay up later and watch his favorite TV show anymore. I guess it's true what they say. You can't take it with you. Father buried his head in the sand shows up again to say he and Mary will find the demon baby and teach it to be good? Even though it's already a murderer and a demon? You promised you'd make sense. <laughs> We had an agreement. I lied! I'm a demon versatile disc! It's a demon! <laughs> be DVD and DVD be born! I don't want to do a dumb bit with a talking DVD. Happy Halloween! So fake, that toy is gonna break. Fainers don't let me down. You need to be around. Grab that chocolate pizza. I even like it cause I want a failer. So failers, bring a mortar comedy. Failer, so failers, an animation movie. Failer, so failers, what we really is so fun. Failer, so failers, what's your opinion about? Anyway, Born is extremely flawed, but it's actually perfect. A plus, zero out of ten.